Hello everyone. I can see a lot of people already has been joined this conference. And um, since this is a global uh, conference, we are having a different time zones. But you know, uh, we're gonna make a hard start uh, as we has promi well, promised the time. Okay. So I still can see a lot of uh, new participants are coming to our webinar. Thank you so much. Uh, but we're going to make a start uh, while the uh, peoples can join in us uh, while this show is going on. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> hello everyone. Welcome to Medical Packaging Conference 2020. Medical Packaging Conference is an annual educational conference for past several years. Uh, we've been talking about the most updated medical device packaging trends and regulatory changes. This year, uh, we are all going through tough times. A lot of things has been changed, uh, which we are believed that it is normal. Typically, uh, this conference uh, being held in Europe and it was offline events, but this year uh, we make it to a virtual connect with the global participants. Uh, we are now having uh, approximately uh, 200 peoples are connected right now uh, uh, at the same time. And I would like to thank uh, all of you who have signed up for uh, Medical Packaging Conference 2020. Uh, this is the first day of the event, and uh, I'm Darren O, uh, based in Seoul, South Korea, uh, your moderator for uh, today. Uh, I'm part of DuPont Medical and Pharmaceutical Packaging Team and member of ISO TC198, uh, Sterilization of Healthcare Products. Um, as you can see from uh, the screen, uh, today we'll have a uh, two uh, sessions with the two speakers, uh, Nicole Keller, uh, Application Development uh, Development Leader EMEA of DuPont, will talk about uh, the important considerations in sterile packaging development. And Nick Packett, uh, MDM Specialist of DuPont, will sharing understanding, understanding packaging life cycle. Each session will take approximately 30 minutes uh, per each and there will be live Q&A uh, session at the final. To keep this time plan, uh, I would like to ask your cooperations to leave your questions in the window on the side of your webinar window. You will review, uh, we will review the, the, those questions and the uh, uh, answers, as many as of them, uh, today as possible. Especially if, if we see uh, uh, some topical trends uh, we, we may not get to every questions, but we'll do our best and then tackle them, uh, the challenges if it indeed occurs. Okay, so uh, then we're about to uh, start the very first session of uh, Medical Packaging 2020 with uh, Nicole's sharing. As I described earlier, uh, Nicole is European Application Development Leader for Medical and Pharmaceutical Protection. And Nicole is a packaging engineer and she provides technical and application guide to sterile packaging and medical device manufacturers, uh, as well as pharmaceutical companies. Today, she will share some of the information of material selection and packaging design criteria as well as definition of sealing uh, process uh, process window for sterile barrier packaging. So, uh, and I'm working in application development uh, for EMEA medical and pharmaceutical packaging. Okay. I will talk about important considerations in sterile packaging development today. So I shortly will go over the, the agenda so that you see what we will discuss today. So first, um, I will shortly summarize the basic functions of a sterile packaging. This line. Then we will see some aspects to consider in sterile packaging development. 
then dig into some considerations regarding material selection as well as packaging design. And then uh, we will see um, some different packaging and sealing equipments and related to that, how a heat sealing process can be developed. And finally, of course, the sterile packaging and the processes need to be validated, tested and validated. Let's start. So the basic functions of a sterile packaging, um, first, the packaging should allow for sterilization for the sterilization method, which has been selected, right? Can be gamma, ETO, E-beam, ASER. Um, the packaging should uh, protect the product uh, from um, punctures, for example, so physical protection, but also from microbial ingress uh, by microbial barrier, for example so that the um, sterility can be maintained of the device until the point of use. And then at the point of use, the packaging should be easy to open and a septic presentation should be feasible. So those are also important usability requirements now. And uh, so the product should be identified via label, via barcodes, text, etc. So when a medical device manufacturer starts to consider uh, the development of um, a sterile packaging for his, uh, for his device, so um, he will start, of course, thinking about the different uh, aspects around the medical device, the clinical use, uh, the class of device, which is usually also linked to some uh, different risk requirements or considerations. Um, about the liability, um, if the product will be sold globally, locally, what is the distribution cycle, who are the competitors, etc. So uh, normally they are sitting together, MDM is sitting together with the different departments, uh, package uh, engineering, regulatory affairs, sterilization, QA, etc. So what is also important to get the different aspects uh, considered. Um, and then it comes to packaging design. And for sterile packaging, um, usually, especially for porous packaging, um, there are those three main categories of, of packaging. There are others, of course, but so um, here we'll, we will talk a little bit about rigid trays and lids, pouches and bags, and form fill seal uh, blisters, so from produced on a form fill seal machine. In terms of sterilization, um, so very important consideration. So um, they are the mostly used ones in the market are um, normally it, um, today at ethylene oxide, gamma radiation e beam, so radiation and ETO. But there are also uh, steam applications, for example, also in combination products, pharma, um, and low temperature gas plasma sterilization applications. In terms of material, for example, can be used uh, top webs, Tyvek, or medical grade paper, or also film. And then bottom web usually is, um, is for us a film. I shortly would like to go over the um, Tyvek portfolio and the linked applications. So starting from left down, going up to the right. Uh, so from Tyvek 4TL, Tyvek 2FS, Tyvek 1059B and Tyvek 1073B. So like, uh, it's a little bit like stairs, it goes up and also so goes up the basis weight, uh, the physical properties of strength, um, pro 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 protection features, and also performance wise. So we can say that 1073B is uh, used uh, for high risk devices, um, like also class three devices or pharmaceutical applications, while Tyvek 40L, and which is uh, by the way, um, one of the newer products, um, is a yeah, cost-effective option for lighter weight, lower risk uh, devices. So um, on the right side, you can see some pictures of the, of the packaging configurations, which I've just mentioned before. So you have rigid trays, for example, or foam for seal uh, packaging. Um, so thermoform trays with some um, lidding material, uh, can be Tyvek or medical grade paper. Um, then in the middle, you have a header bag. Um, a so-called header bag, which is three-quarter film with a porous Tyvek window, which allows for gas sterilization. And down you have a picture, um, an example of 2D packaging, so flat pouches, usually one side porous material and the other side film. When you develop um, a sterile packaging um, and, you, and you plan to have a peelable packaging, so there are some important considerations in terms of material selection. So for example, when you look on the picture on the left side, um, you see a container or a, yeah, a blister. 
um, this atavic lid in this case, which is peeled off. And you see the sealant which is breaking here. So important that's, that there is the seal which is failing and not a tie or the container, right? So, and so there are different systems. Um, there are even more, but two very common ones are cohesive and adhesive peel systems. So when you look on the blue picture here, you have component A, which could be tie and component B, which could be the film, and you have the sealant in between, which could be um, linked to the tie or linked to the film, right? So principally, an adhesive failure would be when the sealant, sealant is going off from the Tyvek or the film again when peeling off, or the cohesive failure is really that the sealant is failing in itself. For a good peel packaging with a stable process window, I would recommend the cohesive peel system, this Tyvek packaging at least. So. Here, as said, so the, the sealant um, can be either on the Tyvek or paper side or on the, on the film side. Um, so in, in terms of Tyvek, you have principally three different coating solutions, uh, like a water-based or EVA-based all-over coating, um, or you have hot melt dot coating or grid lacquer coating, depending on the applications, on the materials you want to seal with, et cetera. Also, there are some differences in porosity, but all lead sterilization gas is true. Then uh, you can also select, instead of the coating, a multi-layer um, peel film. It can be co-extruded or laminated, also depending on if it's a flat application or foaming application. But it's important to consider the right um, material to go together. So um, we have something newly um, available on our website. Um, together with the new product Tyvek 40L, what we call the Tyvek 40L Packaging Solution Guidance, which uh, lists a number of peel films and pouches, so forming films and flat films, and also coatings uh, which work uh, with 40L, which should help to find quickly um, a good working packaging solution. So some of the material may of course also work with other Tyvek uh, products. So if you're interested, please consult our Tyvek 4TL website, and then you'll find here the link to the film guidance or to the material guidance, and you can download it um, in the document library. So let's go to some packaging design considerations. Um, for example, when you have selected a pouch, um, there are some recommendations to follow. For example, um, um, there should be ample room be between the chevron tip and the edge of the pouch so that nurses, even if they are clothed, can grab it correctly and open the packaging aseptically. Also, we recommend to avoid folding, especially with Tyvek packaging um, or with any um, packaging, pouch packaging, if it's a sharp fold, um, at least, because when you have the pouch folded in the shelf carton during vibrations, during transport, there could be some abrasion points. So. That is just a recommendation. Um, then in terms of header bags, uh, you can see the pictures on the, on the bottom. So one is very heavily filled um, and uh, with a quite small window and the other one is a little bit more of the space. So it should not uh, be too um, heavily filled and too small window because usually you will peel off the window and take the product out there. And also in that uh, real experiments have already shown with nurses, it is very difficult to aseptically present the content. So, um, for example, the um, Association of Perioperative Registered Nurses uh, considers the inner edge of the heat seal as the border um, line uh, between sterile and non-sterile. So the product should not touch beyond that. So here's a good and a bad example. Then in terms of trays, so either rigid trays, often for seal, rigid or, or semi-rigid or flexible trays, um, also here, it's very important in terms of usability that we have a good peelability without fiber tear or delamination. So you can see here on the right side an example of a <laughs> bad peelability, fiber tear, delamination example, um, which should not be the case. And here, here are some um, yeah, recommendations how, how that can be avoided or the risk be reduced. For example, on the first one, you see um, a blister or tray from top view. You, you, you can see the tray shining through in blue and then the white is the Tyvek lid. So um, when those closest to the edge, uh, goes to the edge, so the lid and the tray flange, then there is some risk of fiber tear because you can seal in some filaments here and that can propagate. Uh, 
um, or you cut through the seal, that's the same issue. So the, uh, the recommendation here is clearly to um, isolate some unsealed gap um, between the seal and, and the edge, or you can even design, like here on the picture, uh, like a flange into the tray, if you have a rigid tray. So different ways of realizing that. Second, um, oversealing or transparentization should be avoided because then also you bake, um, for example, in case of Tyvek, you bake the Tyvek to the film, right? Um, in terms of um, cutting, you should always ensure that your slitting equipment is uh, not damaged, especially if you need to cut through the seal for whatever reason. And then finally, obviously, um, the strength of the top web plays always a role and the selection of the of the adapted bottom web or film or coating what we have just seen before. Coating what we have just seen before. So here, um, just so some typical here, um, packaging and sealing equipment um, for the pouches. Um, so here is just one one example, um, so um, like for, for heat sealing, example, right? Uh, um, like a band sealer or rotary sealer. Uh, like sealer for, or for the for the blisters, uh, flexible or rigid blisters, you can use also from the seal machines or more the automated machines with roll hood, roll Tyvek, and roll film, and then you have a filling station for the product, but highly automated. Or then you have the more manual tray sealing machines, right? Uh, which are, for example, with two cavities, and you put here the empty tray into, you put the device uh, into the cavity, and then you put the lid on or lids on, and then you close uh, like a drawer, and then it's sealed. So all those have uh, common um, the process parameters uh, for the heat sealing. <laughs> so it's temperature, dwell time, and pressure usually. And now it's very important to define the optimal range of those parameters. So not to only seal um, and validate nominal parameters. Now it's important to define like minimum temperature, dwell time, pressure, where you have um, a good and complete quality seal. And then not going so high that the seal already starts to get burned or transparent. So still good quality seal. So this will be your range, and then usually for commercial pr production, of course, you will be sealing on nominal conditions. So there are different ways um, of defining the sealing process window, which I will just shortly um, uh, rise here. So for example, um, heat sealing curve assessment. So you can, for example, seal, uh, so fix in this case, so uh, oh, okay. first dwell time and, and pressure. And then uh, seal at different temperatures, so uh, starting from a lower temperature up to a higher temperature in steps of, um, so it depends, right? But let's say um, in steps of five degrees um, or Fahrenheit, <laughs> and then you go up and you look what your sea strength is doing. So you can uh, measure sea strength, uh, for example, ACM F88 uh, as test method. And then um, you can analyze together with your visual appearance or visual control. You will, of course, also examine the seal quality so you can find the area or the range where you have a good seal appearance and a consistent and good um, appropriate seal strength. There's another method which can be applied uh, among some different ones. So those are the two I just present today, but you can also do it uh, with a design of experiments. When you have some statistical software, you can uh, just indicate what your presumed so low and high conditions are in terms of temperature, dwell time, and pressure, and then uh, the um, the software will propose you some uh, combination of those parameters and some run order, and then you can produce packages and again test them, uh, for example, the seal strength and with some visual um, um, so evaluate the visual quality and maybe also fiber tear. And then, uh, and this is just an example here on the right side, you see a contour plot, a typical outcome, how, how it can look when you have overlaid the different um, outcomes or results of sea strength, visual and fiber tear, so that you can scope your ceiling window that way. If you're interested to learn more about that, so please feel free to contact me um, or one of my team members globally, so we, we can discuss further. After the sealing process uh, definition and uh, packaging design definition, of course, um, the whole thing, sterile barrier system needs to be validated, tested and validated. So um, here it's according to ISO 11607, uh, packaging for terminally sterilized medical devices. Um, there are some requirements in terms of validation. 
So in the part two of the standard, uh, this is about the process validation. So installation qualification, of course, you need to install the equipment and fulfill the different requirements here. Um, then the operational qualification, you will confirm the, the parameters which you have set, the, the process window, and also with performance qualification, demonstrate reproducibility, repeatability. So there are the different steps which are needed to validate your process. But not only, you should also, of course, validate your design, and this is outlined in, in the part one of the standard. So um, packaging system performance testing has to be performed, like for example, this distribution simulation. Uh, on the worst case, there are barrier system um, because you need to show that uh, your packaging, your, your selected packaging, design and materials can withstand all the challenges until um, of the product life cycle, um, so packaging life cycle until the point of use. Then also stability testing needs to be done. Um, Real-time aging and accelerated aging. Um, accelerated aging results can be all already used to uh, commercialize the product, but real-time aging is necessary as well to claim the shelf life you need to claim. And uh, it's not here, but also usability requirements and testing is important um, to get um, a good uh, handling of the packaging guaranteed. So in terms of validation and testing, I just listed a few typical test methods which are used a lot with porous packaging, with Tyvek packaging, for instance, um, but also other packaging. Um, in terms of strength, you need to, of course, demonstrate that your C strength can um, can can withstand, uh, you know, handling, sterilization, transport, etc. So you you can test ASTM F88, um, which is also the picture on the left side with the tensile strength equipment, uh, which is very punctual and very well because you can um, examine and judge all the different seals. Or some are using also burst strength testing, so overall strength test to see how much pressure the, the packaging can withstand. Then you need to, to evaluate that it's different seal integrity um, or integrity of the packaging. And here, for example, so there are different tests. Um, what is usually a lot done is, of course, dye penetration testing, F1929, um, or also bubble testing, which is more, um, which is a whole package test, a little bit more cross-leak, but good post-transportation, for example. And there are also new tests, um, vacuum decay, um, etc., so which are on the market. And uh, not to forget, it's not only about integrity, but also microbial barrier before and after sterilization, etc. So the filtration capability of the porous material part. So you can for find more test methods in ISO 11607. So I shortly summarize uh, what we have discussed today. Um, so for safe and reliable sterile packaging, you should, mm. before you start to design, you should understand the design and user requirements, packaging materials and design aspects, Hello. packaging equipment and sealing process. So this is what we have discussed uh, today. And then when you have uh, all that outlined, you should develop a stable and then have a validated process window. Um, so, and then yeah, validate your packaging process and design. This is uh, what we've seen on the last slide. And then uh, also process control is very important to establish. So, because if you validate once, you still need to ensure that all this stays stable over time as well. And some periodic revalidation is also important. So um, I invite you to visit our website. Uh, there are some new, uh, there are some new content, some new features, but also traditional, um, very helpful um, documentation, like for example the Tyvek te Technical Reference Guide, uh, which is really our um, large data package and also application guide. So please feel free uh, to access and download uh, the material which is available here. So. Um, Please contact me, contact uh, my team members, us, uh, if you would like to discuss further. Thank you very much uh, for listening today. Thank you. It was uh, Nicole Keller. Uh, and I would like to um, add, uh, uh, ask your uh, understanding about the uh, uh, couple of uh, technical issues has happened during the uh, uh, sharings. But um, 
right now we actually having a 360 people are joining this conference at the same time which is a, which is quite a large number of people are connected at the same time so um uh, uh one thing that i would like to ask you is uh, uh please please mute uh, while uh there's uh we are sharing because uh, there can be uh, some echoes or background noises can be uh, on during the sharings, but but you know I, I can I can I surely can feel that all of you all of you 360 people so you guys are uh, focused and concentrating on the uh, the presentations because uh, when we had a first echoes I could see uh, uh, more than 10 questions are saying and there's an echo. <laughs> So I can see that you are quietly uh, focused on uh, to go uh, uh, our presentations. So uh, thank you, thank you again for your active participations. But please uh, mute yourself uh, while the presentation is ongoing. So uh, as you have, uh, uh, we just have heard the key considerations uh, for designing uh, serial barrier packaging. Uh, now let's say we all can. Uh, develop a high quality and safe uh, serial burial packaging. Then what will be the next uh, following activities after we develop a uh, sterile uh, uh, packaging, a sterile burial packaging uh, is the following activities will be much uh, related with downstream operations. So NIP packet uh, uh, is going to be our next speaker, and Nick has been uh, 15 years, 15 years in the middle uh, in the medical uh, device packaging space, and and uh, with the multiple skill sets. But the education is one of the best skills uh, uh, that he has. Uh, that's why uh, we'll have him next to hear about uh, packaging lifecycle. We'll get to Nick's uh, sharing without any pause and. You are doing great right now, but please keep uh, uh, stay with us and and don't forget to leave your questions at the question window. So we'll start uh, next sharing. Hi everyone, my name is Nick Packett, part of the Dupont Tyvek Healthcare team, and today I want to talk about how packaging can impact the life cycle of your product. Uh, and when we talk about life cycle, there's many elements that uh, come into play, right? Downstream from when you design your package, uh, from manufacturing to pack out and handling, sterilization, distribution, product use, and, and ultimately sustain, you know, sustainability and the life of, of your packaging that you've designed. And today we want to walk through and to touch on these different elements and, and discuss how packaging plays a part in each one of these steps. It's not just about you know the package design itself, but understanding the interactions it's going to have within these downstream operations. So when you look, you know, and, and we look at how we typically design packaging or what a packaging engineer's sort of thought process is, we typically trend to you know, what we have in this checklist, the sort of the traditional packaging design uh, uh, activities that are critical to launching a product. And that's, you know, ensuring your package design allows for sterilization, select the right packaging materials, passing distribution uh, and, and, and stability testing, and meeting the regulatory requirements. And these are typically and very important aspects of designing a package in order to uh, validate its design for, for use. Um, but that's not all that can be looked at. There are also some other sort of uh, advanced best practices to look at. And, and that's really looking downstream. How is your package design going to perform in, its, in the operations that it needs to, to, to flow through? And you know, one way to look at packaging is, is, is as an investment, right? What type of return are you going to get out of your package design? What is it going to bring you in each of these downstream processes? And those are the things that we want to dive into a little bit deeper today. So again, here are those 
stages across the life cycle. And in package development, you know, the, the intent of, of package development is to come up with a package design and come up with the best package design. Again, you've got that traditional sort of checklist that, that packaging engineers sort of follow. So when you come up with a package design, right, you end up with a design, you're sort of set, you, you've got your design established, but have you really understood how is that design going to then play a part in manufacturing and pack out? How is it gonna work through sterilization? Is it the most efficient design that you have? Because again, it is going to you know, interact, it is going to play its part um, in all of these, these steps downstream after it's been designed. And once it's been designed, sure, you can go back and change it, but that's, that's not often what you want to do. You want to be moving forward and, and, and developing new things. So first, when we talk about package design um, and developing a package, uh, there's the different aspects that come along with it. Um, and we, we touched on some of these before, right? It's passing your design validation, um, meeting your usability requirements, um, launching a product without delay, right? The last thing you want to do is have issues in your package design validation, which causes you to go back and having to retest because that's going to that's gonna take more time that's going to uh, suck up more resources um, and, and prevent pre prevent the organization from getting the product out into the market um, and, and cost your overall organization uh, time and money. Um, and, and Tyvek packaging sort of can bring that peace of mind. It can bring confidence to your validation um, and, and, and increase the likelihood that you get your product out into the market past your validations without many issues. And moving on to the next uh, step in the life cycle is, is manufacturing. And, and, and things that typically are, are looked at, right, are your yield and quality, your throughput and speed. Um, you know, if you're running form fill seal machines, you know, downtime and changeover um, and, 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 and the different operations or, or technologies that are built into those processes, such as uh, printing. So looking at how a Tyvek package design can benefit the manufacturing process, right? Um, looking at your throughput, Tyvek is a great strength to weight ratio. Tyvek's uh, properties and its, its overall physical characteristics often um, presents a stronger yet lighter weight material. So when it comes to manufacturing, there may be opportunities to actually fit more material on rolls, right? The rolls that you load onto your form fill steel machine. And in turn, that may reduce the amount of downtime that you have because you've got more material on that roll. Your machine is up and running longer. Um, other benefits that come with that strength and durability is reducing the risk of things like web tear outs or breakage on the line. Um, and these can be, uh, you know, they can be very detrimental. You bring a line down and it can take a while to get it back, back up and running. So by using a, a, a Tyvek product, you know, you reduce the risk of that happening and you keep your lines up and running longer. Moving on to pack out, right? This is often very sort of, it can, it can be robotic or, or a, a manual operation. But looking at how do you pack out your secondary packages, um, placing your, your sterile barrier packages or your primary packages in these boxes. Um, and, and there's a variety of, of uh, elements that come into play here, right? How, how quickly can you pack out your boxes and, and also how optimized is your pack out configuration? Um, it, it, it's often that you may need to leave headspace inside of um, packages with some materials to allow expansion to occur and sterilization, um, or you're taking a lot of effort to pack out these boxes as you try to express air from within these. And this is often the case with sort of soft packs, things like uh, drapes and gowns or gauze, um, as an operator is trying to squeeze the air out of the packages. Um, this, this can be time consuming. And so where, where a Tyvek package comes into play here and, and really brings some benefit uh, to this step in the life cycle is Tyvek has really great, great porosity or breathability. Right, so you're able to express air quicker from within these packages. And more importantly, you are not putting the stress on the steels 
that you might be with materials that are not as breathable, right? As, as an operator squeezes those packages, there's a risk of um, creating a defect or, or popping a seal um, that may not go, uh, go noticed in that operation. And, and in turn, you're potentially releasing a defect out into the field. Um, so that's just, you know, one great benefit of, of how, how Tyvek um, can play an important role in, in the pack out operation. As we move on to sterilization, you know, and this is a hot topic these days, especially with gas sterilization processes. Um, but looking at, you know, as I mentioned before, package expansion and, and headspace that you may need to be including in your package design to accommodate the, the expansion that takes place during the, during the sterilization cycle. Um, and then looking at cycle optimization and consolidation of sterilization cycles. Um, there, there is definitely some effort within the industry right now to improve uh, some of the EO cycles, um, consolidating them down to fewer cycles. And, uh, you know, the question is, are your packaging materials going to um, be able to survive those cycles, accommodate those cycles, or, or are there potential issues that you may see? Another element is, is off-gassing time, right? That hold time for that in inventory uh, after the sterilization process takes place. Um, those are some other considerations to look at. And, and how do your packaging materials uh, play a role in that? Is it, does it benefit that process or does it hinder it? Does it, does it require you a longer hold time for, for those materials be before you can release them for sale? Um, in, in radiation sterilization, you know, things, things to look at are, uh, you know, it, it will often release an, uh, an odor um, that, that may not be able to escape the package if it's not breathable. Um, so that is something to take into consideration. Um, and then some other elements around uh, case sizes and pallet configurations, um, using multiple sterilization modes, uh, creating that flexibility in your production process being able to utilize two different types of sterilization modes um, and, and novel sterilization processes that we're seeing come into the market. Um, you know, again, how are your packaging materials going to play a role in all of these, these things? So talk briefly about how does Tyvek, right, benefit your sterilization process. Um, some opportunities, you know, again, around gas sterilization processes is with the potential to optimize your throughput, increase your throughput. Again, if you have packaging configurations that require headspace um, because the packages expand during the vacuum cycles, the Tyvek package may allow you to reduce that headspace or eliminate it altogether. And in turn, that may translate to more boxes per pallet and therefore you're uh, improving your throughput in your sterilization process. Your, your, your off-gassing time, again, right? How long does your product need to uh, remain in inventory or, or in a hold area uh, before you can release it because it's off-gassing? Again, Tyvek has really great porosity. Um, so in turn, you may be able to shorten your off-gassing time. And ultimately what this, what this all boils down to is reducing sterilization costs, right? If you can improve your throughput, if you can reduce uh, your your hold times, you're you're reducing your costs. You're 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 building a more efficient process, and that's all being enabled by the packaging materials that you're selecting. So once you've sterilized, right, it's time to ship your product. Um, ship it out to the end user. Um, and, and some considerations again, right? Overall package size, right? Primary package size is often gonna drive secondary and tertiary packaging sizes. So can you reduce the size of your primary package or your sterile barrier system package? This is then going to uh, you know, translate to smaller secondary and tertiary packaging. And then you know, looking at your packaging materials and how they perform in distribution, right? You've, got, you've probably gone through and you've validated your package design and, and, and it's met your ship testing requirements. 
Um, but you know, there, there are always um, sort of the unforeseen events, um, the excessive handling situations that might be out there in the market and that can result in damage and return product. Um, it could also, you know, if, if uh, it, it can it can cause field action as well, right? And, and product recalls, which is something that you would want to certainly avoid. And then, how is your packaged materials and design going to uh, going to fit into emerging markets, right? Uh, as as you broaden the distribution of your products into the global markets um, and new markets, what are those distribution systems like? Um, and is your package design and materials going to survive what are often more hazardous conditions than, than uh, what your products might be in right now? And so when it comes to, you know, a Tyvek package design, there are some benefits certainly that are going to be achieved in, in distribution um, from, uh, from not only providing you really superior protection, again, to withstand some of those unforeseen events, some of those truly um, hazardous or challenging shipping conditions, uh, a Tyvek package is really gonna fare well um, and, and provide protection to your product. Uh, and then looking at your, your shipping configurations. Again, can you create more efficient shipping configurations uh, using a Tyvek package? You know, it has really great uh, strength it has great abrasion and puncture resistance. You know, we talked about uh, the high level of porosity as well as uh, moisture resistance. I mean, Tyvek is hydrophobic, so it's not going to absorb water, um, at, at which, which is then going to, you know, it'll maintain its strength. It doesn't have what we call sort of wet strength uh, issues where it loses its, its performance and integrity in high humidity environments. So as you, distribute your product into those types of uh, regions that have those environmental conditions, you don't have to worry about your Tyvek packaging losing its strength, right? It's gonna maintain its strength and durability through those challenging conditions. And, and in turn, you know, you continue to sell your product, you don't have to worry about issues. Again, it really gives you that peace of mind um, that your product's gonna survive the, the, the distribution cycles that you're putting it through. And, and moving on to product use, right? You've distributed your product, it's made it to the hospital. Um, and it comes in the front door and now you have, you know, uh, what is often referred to as the last 100 yards, right? And, and how is that package design going to be, you know, your, your materials going to be handled? How are they gonna be stored? You know, often we hear that the secondary packaging or the protective packaging that's around your sterile barrier system is often uh, removed early on in, in the receipt process. And uh, so now your sterile barrier system is sort of on its own, right? It's gotta, it's gotta survive, it's gotta stand on its own to, to some un, typically unanticipated storage conditions and handling conditions. Um, so how is your packaging, and how are your materials going to withstand, withstand those conditions is, is the question, right? And then also looking at Hey, what's your packaging's influence on your user's experience? Aseptic presentation, being able to properly open the, the, the device and present the, the product in a sterile manner. Um, and, and, and those are some, some key considerations to look at um, when, when you're designing your packaging and how it's gonna perform in that aspect. So when it comes to a Tyvek package, right? Again, some some features of Tyvek are it's it's uh, general performance requirement, um, general performance attributes around um, tear, abrasion, and puncture puncture resistance, as well as its ability to uh, clean um, peel cleanly, right? When when that package is open, um, uh, it doesn't lend itself to you know fiber tear or or um, you know tearing when that, that package design is open. And so from a, from a life cycle impact, right, um, being able to withstand those storage conditions um, will prevent products from being returned, right, or damage that may be induced at the hospital, um, as well as it will bring, um, during the actual opening of the product, it ensures a clean peel, 
clean opening of that product so, so the user can aseptically present that product into the sterile field. And then also, you know, there may be after, um, opportunities to optimize your sales configurations for your customers, right? We, we often hear that, um, you know, there, there are too many packaging materials um, or hospitals don't like the amount of packaging materials that are required to ship products to them. Um, so how could, you know, your sterile packaging design um, present opportunities where you can optimize these sales configurations? For example, maybe you're selling single packs and each unit has a box around it. Could you move to a five or a 10 pack configuration, right? Which reduces the amount of secondary packaging uh, that, your, that your customers uh, ends up with and then ultimately needs to dispose of. So, so again, sort of some, some ideas to think about when it comes to you know, product use and how your packaging can benefit your end user. And lastly, here's such touch on sustainability. Right? I, I just mentioned the the, uh, the the layers of packaging that you have, and secondary packaging and primary packaging. So, again, how can your primary package design and materials that you select um, uh, potentially reduce the amount of, of secondary packaging that you need? Um, you know, ultimately, you know, hospitals are, are tasked with disposing of a, a lot of waste. So, you know, how can your packaging um, designs and, and, and what you select to use um, be able to, to create a, a, a whole reduction in the amount of packaging materials that you're potentially introducing into a hospital? Um, and, and, you know, other sustainability, sustainability benefits, right, just come from general scrap reduction you know, optimization across your life cycle and sterilization and distribution, um, and and as well as looking at the end of use, right? The end of life of that um, of that product um, is your packaging recyclable um, or not, and 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 something to to consider as you select your select your materials. So, when it comes to Tyvek and, and its role it plays in sustainability. Um, you know, again, uh, potentially reducing the amount of secondary and, and tertiary packaging that you may have. Um, you know, also looking at transportation of the of your raw materials. Right? Again, that strength to weight ratio. Tyvek is is a much lighter weight material than many alternatives that need to be uh, made uh, heavier and thicker to achieve the same performance as Tyvek has. So looking, you know, at the very front end of the distribution of those materials, there could be sustainability benefits in using a lighter weight material like Tyvek. And then lastly, right, reducing the amount of waste that you're introducing into the healthcare system. And again, this can be achieved by potentially creating more efficient uh, packaging configurations, uh, talking to your end use customers and exactly, hey, how do they want to receive their products? Um, you know, is it a case of one or or would it be better to receive larger case sizes? And in turn, you're potentially reducing the amount of overall waste that you're introducing into the system. And lastly here, I just wanna to touch on the model itself, right? This looks a little bit different if you can pick up the, the difference in the previous life cycle model that we put up. And the traditional model is manufacture, pack out, sterilize, and distribute, right? That's the typical model that many ma medical device manufacturers follow. But, but you know, is there, a, is there an opportunity to challenge this model? What if you were to uh, rearrange some of these things? Um, and, and here I've got this displayed, as you can see, between manufacturing and distribution. After manufacturing, there's a pack out process into your sterile barrier system package but don't add your secondary and tertiary packaging, but just put your sterile barrier system through sterilization and follow your sterilization process with a secondary packaging operation. What kind of efficiencies can be achieved in, in, in doing something like this? And what comes to mind to me is, you know, you're reducing the amount of uh, cellulose material that's going into the sterilization process and does that in turn allow you to, to run more efficient or optimized sterilization processes? Without that 
uh, secondary and tertiary packaging materials in the sterilizer? Are you able to fit more you know, units into that sterilizer and then increase your throughput? And then after sterilization, by postponing your secondary packaging operations, does this allow you to create those sort of customized or more efficient configurations to distribute to your, to your end user, right? Sort of uh, being able to, again, reduce the amount of secondary or tertiary packaging that's needed to move your product. And, and, and so I know that this is sort of uh, out there. You might think, of, you might see this slide and say, there's no way we can do this. It's not the way our model is set up. And certainly agree with that, right? It's not gonna be for every type of product is not going to fit within this model. But I, but I, but I, I, I challenge some companies to look at you know, the products and their process and look at this. Is this a model that can really drive some efficiencies and optimizations um, with, within the life cycle of their product and ultimately reduce the total cost of your product. So with that, I'm gonna leave you to, to, to think about this. Um, I, I appreciate you joining us and uh, look forward to our next discussions. Thank you. Um, those informations from uh, Nicole and Nick's sharing, uh, that is corresponds to our current knowledge uh, on the subject. It may be subjected to revision as new knowledge become uh, available. Thank you so much for your understandings. And um, now we'll uh, start um, Q&A sessions. So uh, during the uh, uh, the presentations, we actually uh, 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 grouped make make some groupings of uh, uh, your questions. I mean, thank you so much. Uh, you guys le uh, has left so many questions to us. So uh, I'm gonna read over uh, uh, those questions that you have uh, uh, left us. And and like I said. It is, uh, we make some groups with the uh, similar questions. So uh, uh, your questions uh, might be combining with uh, uh, some of those, you know, uh, uh, you know, questions in here and the uh, answers will, uh, you know, cover uh, some of your questions. So the very first question, what I can see is, uh, you mentioned also a septic presentation. Uh, how would you evaluate a septic presentation? Uh, is there any standard that can be used? And some similar questions in here is, uh, just a moment, let me see. So uh, the other one was also related with this uh, aseptic presentations. So uh, uh, since this is a aseptic presentation, uh, uh, Nicole, can you, can you please answer these questions? Yes, of course. Um, so um, I get that question also um, sometimes offline. So I think it's a good question. So um, to um, our knowledge, there's no standardized approach uh, today for really evaluating a septic presentation. Um, but uh, of course, that can be uh, done in the frame of uh, usability engineering, right, uh, of the medical device and the packaging. Um, there's also an ISO standard, uh, um, 62366. Uh, and uh, so principally what should be done, right, is to um, analyze the use, uh, the environment, uh, what is the risk of, or potential risk with the packaging? Can I grab it correctly? Can I open it um, without tearing, right? That's the aseptic presentation part. Um, and then um, yeah, adapt the design, uh, develop the design and modify it if, uh, if it's not working. Also while doing some evaluation, um, either internally or uh, with some test houses uh, or real nurses, right, to see how it happens, uh, how it works. Um, at the end, of course, you will um, finalize your design and then validate it again, so in real life conditions. Mm -hmm. um, if you have already, let's say, um, I would say, um, packaging in the market and you want to evaluate, so for usability or for aseptic presentation, you may also use um, um, post-market surveillance data, right? And uh, deviate from that um, risks and also document that. 
um, or also when you have a new um, validation um, outstanding, let's say, and the product or the packaging is uh, comparable to one which you have already validated. Also here, um, you, you should be able to use some uh, historical data. And um, by the way, there is also um, the ballot of um, TS 16775, um, which is um, the ISO 11607 guidance document. Um, there's a ballot um, and uh, sometime next year, I don't have the exact timing, but there should be uh, the, um, the new update coming out. And there will be also a few um, factors listed uh, to be considered in terms of usability. A septic presentation is one part of that, right? So. Um, I don't know, Nick. You want to add something? Um, yeah, I mean, I, th I think uh, Nicole, you really covered a lot of it. Um, one, one other thought is, you know, to make sure you have the right audience as well for your usability evaluations. Um, you know, uh, often your your company might be doing usability evaluations on the device, and they get doctors in the room, um, but doctors aren't always the one that are opening packages. And so, um, it's important that you actually get the folks who are opening packages, who are often nurses. Uh, because their experience with the package um, is going to be different than than a doctor, and and so it's really important that you have the right audience for your usability evaluations. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, and and the um, audiences, if you are uh, interested with to hearing more regulatory updates, please don't forget to join the day three. Day three is going to be a regulators' day, so mm -hmm. you will get more updates on day three of this uh, conference. And the second question, uh, this uh, it was uh, 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 I can see multiple questions were uh, 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 you know arose when uh, Nicole was showing some uh, cascaders in the films. So uh, they are asking, uh, well, I have seen that uh, you, Dupont has published a packaging solution guide for Tyvek 4 l and. Uh, uh, he and her is looking for the film with uncoding. Uh, 1073B, which is uh, one of the highest grade of our products. Can I use this, you know, uh, four L guys, uh, guys, uh, you know, to uh, uh, for the 1073B as well? I mean, he is he is uh, asking about the, like more general uh, film questions. So, uh, Nicole, would you please also cover these questions as well? So, in in terms of the guide, right, uh, of the 4TL guides, um, so. So this guidance has been uh, developed um, this focus on um, 4TL because this, uh, um, this style is quite commonly used with um, uncoated with peel films. So, so the idea is to simplify here, let's say, to find um, an optimal packaging solution. Um, but you can also uh, use uh, this film list, of course, for um, yeah, to consider to see or to other uncoated type grades. Um, the, the only thing is uh, you should pay attention if there are some indications on uh, sealing parameters or sealing guidance. Of course, this can vary because uh, the basis rate is different uh, with uh, as our Tyvek rate. So. Thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, it, it is really important whether you know you, you see it is encoding Tyvek and encoded Tyvek and, and check the uh, uh, the weight of each style. And it, is, it can be very. Uh, uh, makes a uh, uh, multiple choice that you know in terms of the styles, in terms of the uh, you know like uh, type of grapes. Um, and <laughs> I was uh, I was a kind of smile when I see a couple of uh, uh, these questions was arose uh, uh, during the uh, uh, next sharing because this is uh, one of one of very pre uh, frequent uh, questions. Uh, but this time there was a little bit of more uh, uh, you know higher level. Uh, Nick, people are quite curious about uh, what what is the total product cost, and I can see these questions. They are not asking about the tieback cost or the packaging cost. They are curious about how how you're going to calculate this, you know, total product cost, you know, from the product goes to uh, the customer. Can you can you uh, give a little bit more uh, your uh, sharings about this? Sure. Question? Yeah. And, and really, that whole life cycle assessment is, is um, helps to identify areas that you may have um, uh, high uh, things that are attributing to a high total cost of your product. So, you know, you, your your pouch and the components that make up your packaging and your device, you know, those are referred to as your cogs, uh, your cost of goods, uh, the, the durable things that you're putting into your product. And then downstream, you have all of these operations that come into play. 
right? And and the cost of those different operations would then make up the total cost of your product. So really by looking at your life cycle, the idea is how can you lower the cost of some of those operations? How can you lower the cost of distributing your product um, by maybe fitting more products onto a pallet, right? Same with uh, sterilization. If you were to look at the cost to run a sterilization cycle and divide that by the number of units that's in there, you get a, uh, a piece price for that sterilization process. So again, that all comes to play into your total cost. So th that's how the total cost is made up and that's how you can sort of uh, break it down to understand where you can find some opportunities to lower the total cost of your product. Mm. Okay, thanks so much. And, and it was also uh, related with very uh, uh, come uh, you know most you know up to date trends question uh, uh, you know it, it it is you know during this in the pandemic situations people have uh, more uh, aware of disinfections and sterilizations so uh, uh, we got some several questions related with this and the very first one is. Uh, can Tyvek packaging be disinfected on the outside with isopropanol or ethanol? So, uh, Nick, would, would, you, would you please answer these questions, please? Yes. Yeah, so... Oh, yeah, uh, sorry. <laughs> As you wish. <laughs> As you wish. As, yeah. As, I can, well, I can uh, take it. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, so um, based on, on the, the information that we have, it's, it's not recommended to use uh, isopropyl alcohol or ethanol um, to uh, try to clean the outside of your packaging. Um, it, it, uh, they both have low surface tension, um, so it can permeate through the Tyvek and, and potentially allow for, for microorganisms or, or other things to penetrate through the packaging. Um, so that would not be, not be recommended. Um, you know, this type of um, concern can be alleviated using um, a double sterile barrier package um, or a triple entry package design, right, where you have multiple layers of um, uh, packaging uh, that then, you know, allows one to sort of open the package in a, in a peel the onion style, right? You can remove the outer package and um, then, then aseptically present that inner package into uh, a, a safe or sterile field. Um, in, in the event that you do, you know, you don't have that design, um, uh, the, this, the recommendation would be to use um, a hydrogen peroxide um, solution, and that would be preferred um, uh, to, to, to clean or wipe down the outside of your package. Mm -hmm. Nicole, anything else you want to add? No, that is uh, absolutely clear. Yes, um, as soon as you have water-based um, solutions, um, I mean, yeah, this, uh, um, as Tyve is hydrophobic, uh, that should work better, but uh, there are other solutions, of course, like double packaging, right? So if it allows, yeah. Yes, I mean, I mean uh, dear our valuable, uh, uh, you know, audiences, as you can see now, uh, I'm, uh, based in Asian Pacific, and Nick is in the North America, and Nicole is in uh, EMEA. So, uh, regarding the tieback, we, we we can give you a very uh, aligned and same comments. But in you know when we talk about the trends or what's happening in a specific market, we may can give you more uh, regional focused one. And uh, in the AP, I seen that some of the hospital uh, CSSD they they you know prepare some buckets and put the uh, alcohols in it and the uh, uh, dip the packagings into the alcohol you know really short time but you know they trying to make some surface disinfections but uh, just like what Nick has mentioned that only created a uh, uh, torture path you know which allows microorganism can be penetrated into uh, our aseptic packaging so please be aware about you know your uh, me, uh, disinfection method and sterilization method, you know, because it can be actually uh, be harmful for our aseptic uh, packaging. So uh, next question is also uh, related with the uh, uh, sterilization. So should I have to go with Nicole or, or Nick? I mean, yeah, among, among two of you, if, you, if you have a, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, any preference, please be the uh, first one to be answered this question. Uh, the uh, This question is, uh, can Tyvek be 
re-sterilized. This is one of the very uh, uh, frequent questions in this you know, pandemic situation. So uh, who's ready for answer this question? I know both of you are ready, but you know, Big Big, would you please? <laughs> Should I? <laughs> okay, Nico, please. <laughs> okay, um, so yeah, um, so can Tavik be re-sterilized? So uh, to make it short, so um, some uh, MDMs or medical device manufacturers are doing that. Um, also, uh, sometimes there are already since the beginning uh, double cycles validated, right? So, but this is the key. Um, uh, so it uh, it may be re-sterilized, right? But of course, uh, this needs to be validated with the respective doses or you know cycles. Um, you, um, by the way, um, and uh, I've mentioned it in my presentation before, so there's a lot of this very uh, useful information about Tyvek uh, sterilization and um, re-sterilization, etc., um, also in our technical reference guide. So I really uh, recommend to have a look in this, uh, I think, 70-page uh, brochure, but there's really a lot of information um, inside. So, Nick, if you want to add again something. But... I think covered it. <laughs> okay. Uh, we, we, I mean, we still have uh, uh, many questions to be covered, so I'm going to uh, uh, next questions. This question is uh, uh, also uh, related with the uh, sterilization at the same time with the uh, packaging design. So um, uh, this question is related with the uh, head space. You know, of course, to the uh, uh, medical device you know, manufacturers, head space can be a headache. You know, so uh, can you uh, explain more about the head space? Uh, pack out and, and sterilizations, how are they all related with? Uh, so um, this is also related with the sterilization uh, questions. So um, um, Nick, would you please? Yeah, yeah, I can take this one. So, um, you know, you know, headspace is, is often um, uh, an, an issue that sometimes uh, package designers or project teams don't really um, become aware of until after they've actually put their product through a sterilization cycle. And um, uh, if, if your product uh, is not using a material that's porous enough or the porous area of your package is small, um, during the vacuum cycle of your sterilization process, the, the packages can, can essentially inflate, right? Like a, like a balloon or, or like a, they, they will pillow. And um, as a result, you know, those packages are now taking up more space within your carton. And so when this happens for the first time, you, you'll either often um, blow out a package seal um, or sometimes even the, the carton itself can be sort of ruptured or, or opened because these packages are pillowing inside of them. Um, and so this, you know, has its effect downstream where um, if your packages are, are pillowing, um, and you choose not to change the materials or the design, then you have to accommodate that somehow. And that's often done with um, making the carton larger. And so you make the carton larger um, and you have to put this empty space in there to allow this expansion to happen. Um, and, and, and then, you know, as we talked about total cost, this then has an effect on the total cost of your product because you've got, well, a larger carton, so you're gonna pay more for that. Um, and you're not, um, putting together the most efficient shipping um, configuration because your boxes are bigger. Um, and, and really that can be solved by selecting the right materials for your primary package and, and, and avoiding the need for this headspace and this expansion to happen. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for uh, these questions. Just like you said, you know, headspace is uh, uh, something that we might can easily overlook, but but it is critically important when you do a uh, uh, packaging design, right? So uh, uh, we are going uh, towards to a, a different group. This group uh, of question is uh, uh, more likely the packaging itself and the uh, all you know uh, testing things. So um, the very first thing is: is there an expiration? for sterile product packs packages with type and material hmm. nicole please please answer answer mm -hmm. these questions okay so um of course um yeah um, a medical device manufacturer will set up an um, an expiration date right for the sterile product mm -hmm. uh, in, in combination with the package uh, a lot depending on the product itself of, uh, as, um, as well but um, so we have uh, generated a lot of data, um, aging data. So uh, we have made aging studies. 
uh, to show uh, that Taiwei can maintain properties um, at least five years. Uh, so five years for, uh, we have tested five years for 2FS and 4TL, for example, or even up to uh, up to 10 years for 1059B and 1073B. Um, and we have also tested um, yeah, microbial barrier properties, uh, physical strength properties, et cetera, so to demonstrate um, that there is, uh, that, that, that there is, um, that it's still working. So, but uh, yeah, as I said, you will need to validate, but you can use that information uh, from us uh, as a base. And uh, also that you will find in the technical reference guide, what I've uh, just mentioned before. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Nicole. And I can see that uh, uh, whew, a lot of questions still coming up. And, mm -hmm. and like I said, uh, uh, during the uh, Nick's, uh, Nicole's and Nick's presentation, we were receiving questions and we've been grouping uh, 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 the questions that you guys been throwing us to during the presentations. But even now you also throwing, I can see a lot of questions coming. Uh, we might not can be cover everything today, but uh, your questions will be remain with us. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, please be understand that we might can back to you uh, after this whole conference it has you know, done. So uh, uh, please you know, be with us. Uh, uh, we'll back to you somehow in the in the near future. So uh, uh, let me keep moving on. Uh, do you? Okay, this is uh, more like. Uh, okay, do you ever apply the pillable adhesive, or is that only done by co extruders or material suppliers? Uh, from now on, let me go really quick. Nick, would you please answer this question? Sure. Um, the the Tyvek material that we produce, that DuPont produces, is uncoated Tyvek. Um, our authorized converters are the ones that apply a, a heat seal coating to the material um, for the different applications that it's going into. Um, and, and so they are the ones um, that apply that coating and, and are really the experts in um, you know the, the performance and the attributes of those coatings that they are applying to the to the raw Tyvek material. Okay, okay. And the uh, next questions will be: hmm. Does Does Dupont offer any information on uh, bonding or peel strength for Tyvek? Uh, you know, for example, he, he was uh, mentioning the blister trace. Uh, uh, can you Can you please continue? Uh, answer this questions please yeah yeah right right on that same theme right so yeah. um on, on on using this example as a blister tray like a rigid blister tray right. um that package design needs to have a, a coating applied to the tyvek that bottom web or that bottom material often does not have an adhesive layer built into a rigid tray material so um uh, you would select a a adhesive you know, through one of your authorized converters that's applying that coating to the Tyvek material for that type of packaging design because the adhesive is needed to adhere the Tyvek to the bottom uh, bottom rigid tray design. Okay, so uh, since we are talking about uh, blister, rigid tray and ceilings, uh, uh, the next question, uh, I, 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 Nicole, I would, you, uh, would like you to answer this question. The stability testing needs to be performed under worst case or nominal selling conditions? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so uh, um, that is not um, um, specifically uh, stated uh, anywhere um, to my knowledge, so not in ISO 11607. Um, so, um, and also to my experience, uh, which comes from the tran transition protocol, which we had uh, um, during a few years and a few years ago, right? Uh, there was a lot of testing which we uh, did in collaboration with different medical device manufacturers. Um, and at that stage, I, I remember that uh, many uh, used uh, nominal sealing conditions, but also some used uh, low, uh, so the lower limit uh, sealing parameters uh, for the packaging assembled production. So, um, so this will depend very much on the risk assessment, right? And on your own assessment and consideration, uh, what the most, yeah, what the risks are and uh, what should be covered uh, with, the, with, with the aging. That, that is so true because uh, uh, sometimes the risk assessment of your own is more important than to knowing what others are doing, right? So uh, uh, please uh, don't forget 
uh, the risk assessment of yourself is also highly important. Uh, and mm -hmm. I would like to make this question as the uh, uh, the last questions, though we still have a lot of questions being stacking up. Uh, uh, but once we answer this question, I will, I will let you know how we're going to do uh, right after uh, this session. So uh, my last mm -hmm. questions will go to uh, uh, Nick. Uh, Nick, is Tyvek recyclable? <laughs> uh, you know, we get this question a lot, right? And 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 with um, sustainability um, on the front of, of a lot of folks' minds, um, you, you know, th that's the reason for the drive for this question. And, and Tyvek is made from high density polyethylene, um, and high density polyethylene is recyclable. So um, Tyvek can be recycled. Um, there are challenges in finding um, the right recycling streams uh, that take uh, Tyvek for recycling, um, but, but we, part uh, the, the DuPont Healthcare team is part of the Healthcare Plastics Recycling Council, and we are, are uh, very active in working um, to drive and, and, and uh, improve um, the acceptance and recyclability of, uh, of our Tyvek material in, into, into the right recycling streams. Okay. So uh, um, saving Earth is important, right? That's right. That's right. Okay, so uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Nicole and Nick, uh, for your presentations and your uh, uh, answers for those you know, questions, as well as uh, thank you for all the audiences who have participated with uh, so many high enthusiasm uh, and the uh, uh, penetration on this uh, uh, conference. I mean, highly appreciate your active participation today. Um, you guys were fantastic audience, and uh, of course, you guys were fantastic speakers too. Uh, so kudos for you guys. Um, like I said, we we have received uh, uh, quite a lot of uh, questions during this uh, uh, presentations, and while we're doing a Q and A. So uh, here's the, what we're gonna do. Uh, we'll be following up after the conference uh, uh, with the survey and presentation uh, presentation slides. Uh, okay, so. Those who have question, uh, how can you get the slice? This is the answer. You know, we'll, we'll trying to work it on, uh, but we cannot get, uh, we cannot say that uh, we'll give every slice. I mean, for today, we we, we will make sure to we will you know find a way how to distributing it. But you know, like uh, for the day two and day three, the situation might might be buried. Uh, but we will make sure to working on to distributing uh, this presentation slice. And some of you, you have asked, how can I, uh, can, how can I get this uh, you know, recorded version? In terms of that one, we're working on it too. We're gonna use uh, multiple platforms. We are thinking about to sharing it through uh, LinkedIn. Uh, and we, we might can find the, uh, the uh, different options as well, but uh, I'm pretty sure we're gonna do it uh, through the LinkedIn. Uh, uh, this webinar video contents will be sharing. Um, this is the end of the first day of uh, Medical Packaging Conference 2020. And, and we'll back to you tomorrow. Of course, Nicole and Nick and I would not be there, <laughs> but you know, uh, other uh, very valuable <laughs> guests, uh, uh, speakers and moderator will be there with you uh, tomorrow at the same time uh, beginning. Uh, hope you can, uh, uh, hope we can see all of you uh, again at tomorrow. And thank you. It was, uh, uh, please have a wonderful uh, rest of your day. This is the end of uh, uh, first day of MPC to Sun Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Stay safe bye -bye. with DuPont, tie back together.